So that was pretty refreshing. I did decide in the end to take a dip. As you saw, it's cold for sure. I'm all cleaned up now. Got my shoes on. Gonna cross the bridge and continue on to the first checkpoint for today, which I guess we're about halfway now, I think. So we've got quite a bit of a steep climb to go. You can see all the orange Fjallraven ta tags trekking all the way up. I'm gonna take a few breaks along the way as I go up. So there was a little, um, like a alpine I think in the summer it's probably some type of restaurant cafe and they've put out um, a few crates of beer and drinks cooling in some flowing water and uh, basically on a trust basis you leave two euros you can pick up a nice refreshing drink so I got a elderflower drink which was nice sweet added a bit of uh, sugar to the blood and now continuing on I think I've got about maybe another two kilometers till I get to the first checkpoint so I've taken a little five minute break before continuing up I think somewhere at the top there is the first checkpoint um, and I'm going to take a little bit of a break there see whether I can um, air out my tent and get it dry oh I just wanted to let you guys know I bought buffalong and I'm using it less for my neck and more as a sweat guard from my wrist and it's working out really well. So I reached the first checkpoint, uh, drawing out my tent behind me if you can see it. I think you can see it, there's too much sun here for me to see what's on the screen. Drawing out my tent and there down there you can see the checkpoint. And we have one more climb up there and then we should be four kilometers or so to the next checkpoint okay somebody remind me again why I do this oh man So I finished uh, at the first checkpoint, dried my tent out, ate something, now heading off to the second checkpoint. Oh, I really hope it's no more climb after that cattle gate up there. So finished the ascent after the first checkpoint and it looks like it's not too bad at the moment, at least for a little bit, get a little bit of a break. Uh, I've been trying to adjust my backpack. I've come to the conclusion that I'm probably structured and have a posture like Quasimodo because one side, the left side of my backpack keeps slipping this way and this one keeps slipping that way. So either my backpack is misaligned. I've tried all the uh, settings on the backpack, but nothing seems to help. So I'm just going with, uh, I have the posture of Quasimodo. And, uh, See what I do with her. So we just reached the highest point for this leg of the trek, and it's got a pretty nice view here. You can, if you so wish, take another little trek up there, and you can probably get a better vantage view. But I'm happy with this. It's pretty nice from here and uh, so you can see the lake there wonder whether that's the lake we have to go back to I'm not sure anyway highest point for the day so this little k2 
cafe, hut, whatever you want to call it. It is about uh, an hour out of the first checkpoint and they're famous or we were told that we should come here and try the fresh buttermilk that they make and they make it with uh, just plain buttermilk and it's actually pretty good. They make it with uh, strawberry syrup and some other type of syrup uh, but the food looks pretty good here as well and they have beer and they have coke and stuff like that so I'd recommend having a little break here if you can. Looks like they make cheese here as well, judging by the pictures. And looks like you can buy the cheese. The big wheels. Mm. A little bit past the hut with the buttermilk, there's the ski lift here. And on the other side of the ski lift, you get another restaurant which is open. So if you're hiking and you want to have something to drink. There's actually a couple of places near this ski lift. It looks like to uh, just have a little bit of a break. Okay, looks like the road curves down onto tarmac after we reach the ski lift. I'm hoping that I've actually not taken a wrong turn anywhere. Turns out I was going the wrong way. Luckily I stopped to have a look at the map and somebody whistled from on top. Probably seeing my orange Fjall Raven on my backpack. So now I gotta climb up again to get back on the path. Ugh. So there's the road which I followed and went down. And here on the side is the sign that I missed. Might be a good idea next time Fjall Raven maybe to place the sign a little bit further towards the road. Oh, this is nice. I hope the shade lasts a bit. It's a nice little cool walk down through the forest. I think when we get to the bottom of this, not too far, we'll reach the second checkpoint. I'm actually enjoying the shade. There's a nice wind blowing through the forest as well. Ooh, it's quite steep and lots and lots of roots on the way down which makes it quite difficult on your knees if your knees are not strong as they are. Woohoo! I spot the checkpoint. Don't know whether you can spot the blue tent through the trees there. It's a bit bright on this film I think. Ooh, okay, last few roots and I'm on to the last 20 meters to the second checkpoint of today and the last one is where we camp which is about another 4.2 kilometers from here but I think that's on flatter ground so here we are the Fjallraven classic Germany flag and the blue tent yee made it thank you I was getting worried there for a moment after walking for like 10 minutes down the road like this, but here's classic and time to cross and I guess go that way. There we go, another classic sign. Cool. At least I know I'm not going in the wrong direction. Okay.